Welcome back to Sync Up. I'm Bobby Tonelli, and we are doing the best of phones right here. We're doing the largest screen, the best camera, the best unique feature, and which is the uh, operating system we like the most. Well, let's get down to it. Okay, biggest phone, Galaxy Note takes it by 5.3 inches. Runner up is the Sensation XL and the HTC Titan at 4.7 inches. Now, if you're looking at both of these, one is definitely bigger than the other, folks. And uh, But this is really on the edge of being a mini tablet. So if you want that, uh, and you want that kind of feel, then the Galaxy Note is for you. It's got a stylus, and it's a beautiful, beautiful phone. But if you're looking for something a little bit more easier to use with one hand, but still want the large screen, then check out the 4.7-inch screens by HTC, the Sensation XL, and the HTC Titan. Okay, moving on to best camera. Uh, we have the HTC Titan 2, which was recently announced with 16 megapixels. 16 megapixels. I mean, the, the Leica we just reviewed has 12. Insane, right, for a smartphone. Next, we have the Nokia N8, which has 12 megapixels, which a lot of people say is one of the best camera phones in the market still to this day. And the iPhone 4S, which is coming in at 8 megapixels, which is really the industry standard. Which is the best camera? We have not seen images from the, the HTC Titan 2 as of yet, the final version, so it's hard to say. But uh, 16 megapixels should be quite an amazing feat if the phone can pull it off. Uh, the Nokia N8, tried and proven, fantastic. And the iPhone 4S, as we know, iPhones, all their, most of the images are really, really good. Let's move on to battery life. Now, some of the best battery life in handheld phone, uh, once again, goes to Samsung Galaxy Note here uh, at a 2,500 milliamp battery. It gives you about 26 hours of talk time, but it is running Android. Multitasking can be an issue, as we all know. So, you know, you gotta kinda keep those uh, variables in check. Also, after that is the Samsung Galaxy 2, which gives you about 18 hours of talk time. Once again, if everything's in check and all your applications are kinda just, you know, really just running at minimal. And the last is the Nokia E6, which is at 14 hours, and this is the same as the iPhone 4S. But once again, when you get into multitasking, it all, it all changes. Now, the best unique feature, when you go to unique features, a lot of the phones have the same things nowadays. The iPhone 4S has Siri, which we all know is really a big advancement in voice command and voice communication. And the next thing, uh, I, I mean, the next thing closest is really what Google has with their uh, voice to text and so forth, but not quite to Siri's level. Moving on to Siri, uh, Sony Xperia, the PlayStation phones. They're all PlayStation certified. That means when the Android market has the PlayStation games in it, it's gonna work beautifully with the Sony Xperia series. And HTC really has something unique about them that uh, a lot of audiophiles like is the Beats by, Aud uh, Beats by Dre. Beats Audio is built in most of their Android phones now, especially with the Sensation XL here. And you see the uh, Beats logo in the back. Gives you a very nice bassy sound if you like uh, techno or hip hop and so forth like that. So a very, very good unique feature. Now let's move on to the best UI. We've got iOS 5. We've got Android 4.0 ice cream sandwich now, but most phones are still on gingerbread. And we've got Windows Phone 7. Now, what is the best? I mean, obviously iPhone is the most mature on the market and has the most apps, and it's just buttery smooth. I mean, when you have software, the software that's built by the same as the hardware manufacturer and they're integrated like that, it's hard to beat it. So we're gonna give number one goes to iOS 5. Number two. This is a tough one. This is really a tough one. Most people would say Android, of course Android, right? It's got so many phones in the market. I don't think, and I know some people are gonna get a little upset on me on this, but I think that the one operating system, the UI that's really coming up is Windows Phone 7. I think it's very, very smooth, as smooth as iPhone. I think uh, it's got a great, uh, the way they integrate the People's Hub, your contacts, your Facebook, your Twitter, uh, the way it's very, very easy to, to navigate, it makes things quite user friendly. I mean, someone, I can give it to my 72 year old mother and she can actually use Windows Phone 7 over Android. So that's kind of my gauge comparison, but at the same time, it just shows you how simple and easy it is. Now, Android is very interesting. Android, I like Android, especially Ice Cream Sandwich, but I do feel it's more for the techie people. Still, it's not as user friendly. It's got a lot of great functions to it. The, the multitasking is some of the best I've seen around. And you know the way that you can, it can integrate with Google Maps and navigation and Google Voice and all the Google products is just really, really good in that aspect. But I think in terms of user as being user friendly, it's not quite there yet. HTC has done a tremendous job with Sense, which makes it a lot easier. Sam, uh, Samsung has done it with their TouchWiz and Sony with their variation as well. But I still think for the uh, a person that's very new to smartphones, 
it's going to be a bit of a learning curve for them. So I am at this point going to say, and this is a, this is a gamble here, I'm going to say that Windows Phone 7 is second and Android is three. But you know what? Android's always upgrading, so I expect to see a lot more for Google very, very soon. That's it with the best of our smartphone edition on SyncUp. Until next time, take care, folks.